Hello and welcome to the Scratch Coding class. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use the touch sensor with Scratch. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. If you didn't check out the last two videos of the series, make sure to do so. And in today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to one of the most important parts in robotics. And these are sensors. So basically, sensors provide robots with information about the environment. And with sensors in the EV3 kit, uh, we're going to look at the touch sensor today, and we've got um, loads of other sensors that, and um, we've actually got motor like rotation sensors built in the motors, and we've also got the color sensor. But the sensor right here is called a touch sensor, and it basically detects when I press this right here. It's definitely the easiest sensor to use, which is why I'm starting with it today. But first of all, we need to actually create an upgrade for a robot. We need to actually attach the touch sensor to it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So all you'll need is just two friction pins like this and then we've got the sensor itself obviously and then we've got a connecting lead and I want to attach the sensor right here but it's entirely up to you where you put it. Uh, I'm leaving the back maybe for something else for future so that's why I'm just going to put it at the front right here and it's easy for me to touch while I'm recording. So first of all we are just going to place a friction pin here and then we're going to place another one here in this gap and then all we need to do is just attach it to the brick like that and then we have a connecting lead and we use the numbered ports for sensors so as you can see right here we've got port one two three four and we use the letters for motors of course so i'm going to use port one for today so i'm going to put it in port one and then we just need to go around and there we go we have a sensor for a robot so we've got two very important blocks relating to the touch sensor. We have this block and this basically detects when the touch sensor is pressed. It's like an events block. And then we also have this one and this is basically like a condition. It basically, uh, you can use it with the if then else block or the if block in control. And what I want to do for our first program is get the sprite to say how many times I've pressed the touch sensor. So we need to create a variable first and we're going to call this count. And then after I do that, I want an easy way that we can just reset count to zero and we can do when basically pressed, then set count to zero. And then after I do that, what I want to do is basically every time the touch sensor is pressed, so we need when button one pressed, we're going to change count by one. And then finally, when I click on the sprite, the sprite will say how many times I've pressed the touch sensor. So we just need to get a say block in looks. And then I just need to drag count right here and this is the script complete so we're going to test it out right now so I'm going to click the touch sensor a few times and now when I click on the sprite it says 5 and now we're just going to make sure it works so we're actually going to hide the count so I can't see it I'm going to reset it and then I'm going to click on it three times one two three and now when I click on the sprite like so it says free. So we've got a perfect script that basically detects how many times the touch sensor has been pressed. So lots of people like to use the touch sensor as an on off switch. So in this program basically what I have done is when I press the touch sensor the robot's going to keep spinning. When I press it again it's going to do nothing. Then when I press it it's going to keep spinning. Then so on it's just going to keep repeating. So what we want is a forever loop to start off with and then we need a wait until button is pressed. And then when the touch sensor is pressed uh, we're just going to move the motor B. And then when I press it again, it's just going to do nothing. And this just repeats constantly. So let's press the green flag. And when I press this. And then when I press it again, it turns off. When I press it again, it turns on. When I press it again, it turns off. So that is a very simple on off switch and you can make it do different things instead of just turning in a circle. But now we are going to move on to our final program today. For this final program what I want to do is basically use the touch sensor as a random picker. So when I press the touch sensor something random will happen. So first of all we need when touch sensor is pressed and then we need to set a variable to two random values for today's demonstration but you can use as many random events as you like so for example if you did random 1 to 10 you would have a random event if coin was equal to 1 if coin was equal to 2 and so on so we're just going to have two events just to save a bit of time so if coin is equal to 1 
then something's going to happen and then if coin is equal to 2 something's going to happen so I just need to duplicate this and what I want to do if coin is equal to 1 is I want the robot to move forward and I'm not going to explain too much about that because we did that in the last video basically you just want two messages and then I'm actually just going to set the power of both motors to let's say 30% and then I just want the motors to turn anti-clockwise and then I just duplicate this to the other when I receive message and the robot just moved there but that's because I clicked it and then now it's complete and then now if I want um, coin is equal to 2 I basically want the backdrop to switch so we're just going to switch the backdrop to the arctic backdrop and then we are just going to wait for two seconds so we can see it and then I'm just going to switch it back to the plain white backdrop and that is basically all for this program so I'm just going to align the robot again and then now if I press the touch sensor it moves forward if I press it again it switches to the arctic backdrop if I press it again it moves forward if I press it again and moves forward so see it's completely random it's not doing the same stuff every single time so as I said earlier just add a bunch more events and the extra programming challenge you could do is make s some stuff weird and others for example if you the robot moving is quite common but it's switching to another backdrop is quite rare so you can think about that you're gonna need sort of the or block here so you can do if count is equal to two and then and uh, or if coin is equal to 3 to make something more common so think about that and that is going to be it for today's video so if you enjoyed it make sure to leave a like and subscribe and we are definitely not done with sensors so i will see you in the next video bye for now